Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a different style of video for you. It is a haul video, but it's a book haul video. So I've never done a book haul video on this channel before. I've never even talked about books, but the truth of it is uh, one of my great hobbies is reading. Unfortunately, I don't have a ton of time to do it, but when I get the opportunity to read a good book, I love to do it. So I just recently ordered a bunch of books on Amazon. They came in, so I thought I would share them with you. Uh, most of them, all of them, are chick lit, so that's kind of what I like, just easy to read, no need to think about it, kind of get wrapped up in the story, good books. So I will get straight into it and show you the books that I just received, received from Amazon today. All right, so starting off, I picked up the book, What Alice Forgot. Basically what I did was I went online because I didn't know um, you know, any books that were coming out that I wanted to read and I just kind of got some reviews and read a little bit about them and if they sounded good, then I ordered them. This one sounded really good, What Alice Forgot. This is by Leanne Morarity, Morarity. I hope I'm saying that good. She also wrote the book The Husband's Secret and Big Little Lies. So this also says it's soon to be a motion picture. So I find they're doing this with a ton of books now. Like I'm currently reading Me Before You um, and that the movie's already out and I'm trying to get through the book so I can go watch the movie. Anyways, what Alice forgot, uh, just to give you a quick little blurb of what these books are about in case uh, you want to pick them up. It basically says that Alice Love is a 29, crazy about her husband Nick and pregnant with her first child. So imagine Alice's surprise when she comes to on the floor of a gym and she hates the gym and she's whisked off to the hospital where she discovers that the honeymoon is truly over she's actually 39 years old and has three kids and is getting divorced so that's part of what the back of it says so this sounded pretty intriguing to me so i'm excited to to get into that the uh the next book Kind of different this is a Gillian Flynn book who is the author that wrote Gone Girl and I read that book as well this one's called Sharp Objects and the reason I picked this one up is just because she wrote Gone Girl and I read Gone Girl now Gone Girl it took me forever to get into it I felt like the first half of the book was so boring but then the last half of the book I couldn't put it down so I didn't know if another one of her books I should give it a go or not but I did Sharp Objects so it says Fresh from a brief stay at a psych hospital, reporter Camille Preaker faces a troubling assignment. She must return to her tiny hometown to cover the murders of two preteen girls. For years, Camille has hardly spoken to her neurotic, hypochondriac mother or to the half-sister she barely knows, a beautiful 13-year-old with an eerie grip on the town. Now installed in her old bedroom in her family's Victorian mansion, Camille finds herself identifying with the young victims a bit too strongly. Uh, dodged by her own demons, she must unravel the psychological puzzle of her own past if she wants to get the story and survive the homecoming. So again, it seems like kind of one of these dark and twisted, weird Gillian Flynn type books, um, but I picked it up. It's not that big either. It's a pretty thin novel, so I think I can get through it pretty quickly, but I picked that one up as well. Number three is Landline. And this book here is by Rainbow Rowell. So this one, I love the color of this too. I love the, the, the cover, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, as far as time machines go, a magic telephone is pretty useless. TV writer Georgie McCool can't actually visit the past. All she can do is call it and hope it picks up and hope he picks up. So because once Georgie realizes she has a magic phone that calls into her past, all she wants to do is make, thing right, make things right with her husband, Neil. So maybe she can fix the things in her past that seem unfixable in the present. Maybe this is stupid. Maybe this stupid phone is giving her a chance to start over. Does Georgie want to start over? So I don't know, it kind of seemed cool. It's obviously about a marriage. There's obviously problems. And she can call and speak to her husband in the past. So that kind of sounded funky and different, so I got that one. Number four, The Girl Who Stopped Swimming. 
This is by Jocelyn Jackson. Um, do, I mean, it looks good. Again, this one says Laurel Gray Hawthorne hasn't seen a ghost in 13 years. And she and her husband have lived in their beautiful gated community. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> she hasn't seen a ghost in 13 years. She and her husband have lived in their beautiful gated community. Okay, then in the dog days of Florida, August, she wakes to find Molly, her daughter's best friend, standing by her bed, who then leads her to her own small body floating lifelessly in the Hawthorne's pool. Laurel's carefully constructed existence cracks and the past seeps through. Laurel and her sister Talia grew up in what looked like a typical blue collar home, but the greys, have lo the greys have long been hiding a skeleton in their closet. While Laurel built her perfect life, Talia became an actress with a capital A, a woman who doesn't fit in Laurel's tidy world. Now Molly can't rest until someone learns her secrets. Laurel turns to her sister and together they begin a journey that will unearth their family's history, the true state of Laurel's marriage, and what really happened to the girl who stopped swimming. So, sounds good, interesting. Then I picked up um, Where We Belong, which is by Emily Giffen. Emily Giffen is one of my favorite authors. Um, I'm sure you've seen the movie Something Borrowed, but I read that whole series and I loved them all. So if she ever comes out with a new book, I will try to get it. And this is one that I haven't read of hers. So this one says, Marion Caldwell is a 36 year old television producer living her dream in New York City. With a fulfilling career, a picture perfect relationship, she has convinced everyone, including herself, that her life is just as she wants it to be. But one night, Marion answers a knock on the door only to find Kirby Rose, an 18 year old girl with a key to a past that Marion thought she had locked away forever. From the moment Kirby appears on her doorstep, Marianne's meticulously constructed world will be shaken to its core, resurrecting memories of a passionate young love affair and threaten everything that has come to define her. For the precocious and headstrong Kirby, the encounter will spur a process of discovery that ushers her across the threshold of adulthood, forcing her to reevaluate her family and future in a wise and bittersweet light. As Marion and Kirby embark on a quest to find the one thing missing in their lives, each will come to recognize that where we belong is often where we least expect, and expect to find ourselves, a place that we may have willed ourselves to forget, but that the heart remembers forever. So I kind of already have my thoughts on who this Kirby character is going to be, but it's interesting, so that is an Emily Giffen book. Then the last book that I ordered is a little bit different from those kind of chick lit books. And this is The Road Less Traveled by M. Scott Peck, MD. This is a different book. It says this is a new psychology of love, traditional values and spiritual growth. Um, and it's a timeless classic. More than 7 million copies have been sold. And this one I picked up because somebody had said, I can't remember where I was reading it. I was looking for reviews on books and, it, and somebody had said that one of their great professors always recommended books. And if he recommended a book, they would always get it. And this was one of those books. So the back of this one just says, perhaps no book in this generation has had a more profound impact on our intellectual and spiritual lives than The Road Less Traveled. With sales of more than 7 million copies in the United States and Canada and translations into more than 23 languages, it has made publishing history, spending more than 10 years on the New York Times bestseller list. Written in a voice that is timeless in its message of understanding, The Road Less Travels continues to help us explore the very nature of loving relationships and leads us towards a new serenity of fullness of life. It helps us learn how to distinguish dependency from love, how to become a more sensitive parent, and ultimately how to become one's own true self. Recognizing that, as in the famous opening line of the book, life is difficult, and that the journey to spiritual growth is a long one. Dr. Peck never bullies his readers, but rather guides them gently through the hard and often painful process of change toward a higher level of self-understanding. 
So if this is more of a book that I think that I'm really gonna get something from, um, as opposed to those like chip, like lit, lit stories, but it sounded really good. And I think it's always good if we can read a book that kind of maybe lifts us spiritually or encourages us or motivates, motivates us to change or better ourselves or to understand ourselves better. Um, and so it kind of has all of those things wrapped into one. So I picked it up and I'm going to read it. So I don't know which one I'm gonna read first. If you've read any of the books that I mentioned and one is like your absolute favorite, leave in the comments below which one you think that I'm going to read first because I'm definitely gonna finish Me Before You before I embark on any of these new books. So I figure I'm gonna finish it um, hopefully this week. So in the next couple of days, I'll be starting these. So please uh, leave in the comments which one you think I should start with first if you've read them, but don't give me any spoilers because I'm really excited to read them. Uh, and thank you so much. So if you don't already, please subscribe. I really appreciate all of my subscribers. I love you so much. So if you haven't, then click the red button and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Snapchat where I snap every single day. And my Snapchat is Karina Michelle. And I will put all of this information in the description box below. You can always follow me on Instagram as well. And that's Karina Michelle Life. So I would love to have you guys all on Snapchat and Instagram. And we can communicate that way about books or whatever else it may be. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time. Bye.